Our uh, next speaker is Jim Ellesmere, uh, director of MIS program in Halifax. Uh, Jim will be talking to us about his three biggest mistakes with gastric sleeve. Uh, he's also a, a really well-known therapeutic endoscopist, so when you think about other questions later, you can always hit him up for those. Thanks, Jim. Uh, thanks for the opportunity to speak. Done some consulting with Ethicon. Uh, sleeve gastrectomy, as uh, you're all aware, and it was just nicely demonstrated, involves resecting the greater curve of the stomach. It was uh, first used in the uh, stage approach uh, for super obesity, but what we've all seen increasingly is being used as a primary procedure. I do sleeve as uh, the lion's share of my practice. And I'm always impressed every time I get together with my colleagues that more and more are adopting similar strategies. The uh, uh, advantages of a sleeve gastrectomy, this is what drives a lot of the patient choice, is the fact that we know there's a lot of prospective data now showing that uh, morbidity is low, the mortality rates are low, the, uh, the weight loss uh, is effective, uh, particularly in the short and midterm, still some questions about the longer term uh, weight loss in terms of durability. The uh, resolution that we've seen has been excellent, so you see resolution of the metabolic syndrome with the sleeve. Uh, Dan mentioned that I do a fair amount of endoscopy, and so uh, uh, cutting the root to the papilla is a bad idea if you make your living doing ERCP. So it's a, it allows post-operative ERCP as well as gastroscopy. Uh, the operation itself is uh, easily revised and uh, converted. And, uh, and one of the very nice features, of course, is long-term. You don't see the marginal ulceration, internal hernia that we uh, just heard about, as well as the uh, nutritional deficiencies that we've heard about. The uh, disadvantages, of course, with the operation is that uh, leaks, though rare when they do occur, uh, can be challenging to manage. The long-term follow-up data is uh, still j emerging, and uh, the focus of this uh, discussion today is uh, the issue that w we're seeing that uh, sleeve itself can exacerbate uh, gastroesophageal reflux. And so really the objectives for this session specifically is to focus on uh, morbid obesity and gastroesophageal reflux, discuss the effect of a sleeve gastrectomy on, sleeve, uh, on gastroesophageal reflux, and then should this occur in your patients who have a sleeve gastrectomy, discuss the strategy for uh, managing uh, that particular problem. Now we know that uh, GERD and uh, morbid obesity go hand in hand. There's a very strong association with uh, body mass index. GERD occurs in approximately 50% of patients who are morbidly obese. Um, now, if you just drill down on the symptomatic hiatal hernia patients, that's probably about 15% of the, the morbidly obese patients. And so the main cause of uh, GERD within the morbid obese population is the increased intra-abdominal pressures that's uh, combined with uh, transient relaxation of the uh, lower esophageal uh, sphincter itself. Uh, we know within the morbidly obese that the most effective treatment uh, for gastroesophageal reflux is bariatric surgery. The most uh, literature that's out there in terms of uh, uh, preferred technique, if, if you're going after gastroesophageal reflux itself in a, in a patient who's morbidly obese, is to approach that uh, with a uh, Roux and Y uh, gastric bypass. Uh, in fact, many authors uh, will, uh, in fact, uh, do not even recommend that you contemplate doing a, a restrictive procedure in patients with uh, symptomatic uh, gastroesophageal reflux. Despite that, there are, there are many restrictive procedures that are being done in many uh, uh, series, particularly on sleeve. And uh, the, uh, the rate of GERD after a sleeve uh, has been reported to occur somewhere between 7 and 20 percent at 12 to 24 months. And uh, if you look at the uh, International uh, uh, Consensus Summit, uh, the second uh, uh, summit, uh, GERD was reported to occur in 6.5% of patients, and then by the third uh, summit, it was uh, reported at uh, 17%. So this, the sense that is, it may be early on, it was a little um, underappreciated, and it's, uh, if their experience with sleeve it increases, uh, we have better appreciation of the issues. Now what complicates interpreting things, of course, is the variability uh, in, in the literature, the indications uh, for sleeve gastrectomy and the techniques used uh, are, are different. Uh, as far as looking at gastroesophageal reflux itself, 
the, uh, there's a difference in the uh, diagnostic criteria, what testing is used, are they using pH testing, uh, or is it just based on endoscopy, is it based on uh, a barium study, so there's variability within the literature, is it just based on symptoms? Um, and then uh, it's not surprising then that the data that we see uh, is sometimes uh, contradictory and it just does make uh, comparison uh, this, the literature a little difficult. There was a systematic review published in 2011 from a group in uh, Alberta. Uh, they reported that their seven studies actually show a decrease in reflux symptoms all comers after sleeve gastrectomy, whereas they also uh, uh, reported that there were four studies that reported an increase in GERD symptoms uh, for all comers after sleeve gastrectomy. And then there was also this temporal appreciation as, as well as that kind of most studies said we saw an increase in reflux during the first year post sleeve gastrectomy but then following that you see a decrease in the third post-operative year. Now what's interesting now is as more longer term data is emerging there's a sense that this is almost like a uh, this curve starts to swing back up uh, with, with, with time basically that you're seeing increase in reflux uh, further out. If you look at it from a uh, mechanical uh, biological point of view there are factors that, uh, with the sleeve gastrectomy that actually decrease gastroesophageal reflux. That is, there's a reduced acid production. There's a, we know there's well-documented accelerated gastric emptying. And then, of course, the a major contributor is the reduced interabdominal pressure due to decreased uh, body weight. But there's also technical factors that increase gastroesophageal reflux. So the, the shape of the sleeve itself can contribute to, to reflux. There's increased interluminal pressure. The stomach itself is stiffer, so the lack of gastric compliance can lead to uh, gastroesophageal reflux. And then some emerging literature on, on the notion that uh, the, the sling fibers around the GE junction that are disrupted with the sleeve gastrectomy can actually lead to decreased lower esophageal sphincter uh, pressure. Very nice series published in Obesity Surgery 2012 looking at uh, a 10-year experience with sleeve gastrectomy and pointing out what uh, the authors considered are the uh, salient technical uh, considerations when doing a sleeve gastrectomy, specifically with regards to gastroesophageal reflux. Uh, the, if there's a persistent hiatal hernia, that can lead to uh, worsening symptoms. Uh, if a patient has a patchless cardia, that's something to be considered. Uh, a very important consideration is a relative narrowing of the junction of the vertical and the horizontal portion of the sleeve. So not only just a narrowing of that area, but even potentially a twist in that area uh, can lead uh, to uh, uh, reflux and to be considered. And then patients who uh, subsequently develop a dilated fundus or are left with a dilated fundus, uh, potentially again at higher risk. Uh, if uh, GERD uh, presents after sleeve gastrectomy. It is a fairly classical presentation with uh, symptoms of burning pain, heartburn, regurgitation. As uh, mentioned previously, this could be early or a late complication. And the first line treatment, and the treatment that works in the lion's share of patients, uh, is anti reflux medical uh, therapy. However, um, there, there are uh, patients, as we know, that. Uh, medical therapy is not adequate for their gastroesophageal reflux. And so those patients where you get in a situation, should you consider a revision, should you consider a conversion to something else? Well, uh, if there's clear anatomical problem, if there's a stomal stenosis, or if there's a hiatal hernia, then uh, revising is, a, is, a, is an option. Um, however, uh, most authors would recommend at this particular junction, given the, the the, the benefits when it comes to specifically to reflux with a, with a Rubai gastric bypass that consider, consideration for a conversion is given, uh, which can be performed with uh, excellent results. Um, you don't want to get a situation where you do something and then you're still having bad reflux and then you have to go back and convert to a Rubai gastric bypass because you know, third time uh, reoperative surgery is never uh, your goal. So in summary, uh, gastroesophageal reflux is common in patients uh, with morbid obesity. Sleeve gastrectomy can exacerbate reflux, though most uh, symptoms can be treated medically. Uh, GERD uh, after sleeve gastrectomy can occur both as an early and late complication. Most uh, reflux can be treated quite successfully medically. However, uh, should you have a patient with very severe symptoms, I think they stand to benefit from a, uh, a conversion uh, to a RUI uh, a gastric bypass. Thank you. Thank you very much.